So good day and bon dia Barcelona. Uh, my name is Marco Marichal. Um, the program looks like first 10 minutes I'm going to speak about a nationwide survey among the Dutch about mobility in the future. And then I want to represent Jeanette van Arem. She's over there. And she's going to talk about the province of North Holland. And Joost Belsma, at least, uh, of Together, the sales uh, manager. So we are going to have like 10 minutes each. And then we can have questions uh, uh, about the different kind of uh, companies and the things we, uh, we say and we tell. So what we did as, uh, as a company, we did a large survey among the Dutch people about attitude, knowledge, and behavior towards the future of mobility in 2030. Because it's very important that, of course, when you look at nationwide, a couple of people got great ideas, like the iPhone. And I heard Steve Jobs once said, well, when he, we ask the consumers, there won't be an iPhone. So don't ask them. That's true, but first you got the ideas, and then you have to market your idea. And that is why we did the survey, to market the idea of mobility in the future. Connected cars, self-driving cars. But first of all, I want to play a game with you. And you can, uh, uh, it's a contest, and there is a winner. Uh, so I hope you all uh, participate uh, in that, because in the end, we are all citizens of the world. And I wanted to know if you guess what the Dutch people say about connected cars, knowledge, attitudes, and how you think that mobility in the future, 2030, will look like. So I ask you a couple of questions, and then we got one winner. The winner gets a round of applause, world fame, and also one hour of, of advice from me. If you don't want it, please uh, uh, sit, stay put. But I can imagine maybe you want. So I hope you all participate. So let's stand, and I will ask you a couple of questions. So please raise. And I will get here. So the first question is about the future of mobility 2030. And we ask the Dutch people, if you please want to uh, stand, because we all have to participate, even you, Aurora, because maybe you can win, the, win a prize. Um, and the question was, when you look at 2030 and the future of mobility, what will the streets look like? Will there be mostly self-driving cars, or will there be mostly electrical cars? So what did people think and feel about 2030? When you say, well, there's going to be mostly the electrical cars, then you can sit down. But when you say, no, 2030 will be about the self-driving cars, you can stand. And you make your choice now. Thank you very much. Everybody who is sitting, come to me, and everybody who stands can sit down because it's the electrical cars. So I need everybody who sits and says the electrical cars has to come to me because we're not finished, otherwise there won't be a winner. Ah, oh, okay. So we got everybody? Yeah, very good. So the next question is about gender. You ask the People, what do you think? Connected cars and the self-driving cars. When there's a self-driving car up up front, which person will get in first? Will it be the male or will it be the female? So that's the question. When you say, well, it will be the male, you can stand over with me because I'm the male. And if you say the female, you can stand over to Jeanette. So that's a gender question. The male is over here, and the female is over there. <laughs> there, is, there is no, yeah, there is no, there's no middle at this, uh, at this point. Thank you very much. You can sit down because it's the male. Sorry, sorry. So another question we ask when to the youngsters. So let's take another question. We ask the youngsters: Is a self-driving car is coming in front? and Ariane Grande is getting in, 
or Justin Bieber is getting in, which one of the two would you really like to get in to the youngsters? So between 12 and 24 uh, years. Doesn't matter, female or, or male. So the choice was Ariana Grande or Justin Bieber. When you say it's going to be Ariana Grande, who's the most popular, you can stand over there. If you say no, it's going to be Justin Bieber, you can stand over there. You're, you're Justin Bieber? Sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. Round of applause, and your name is Milu. Yeah. Thank you. And you get the ticket also. You get the prize, otherwise, it won't be fun. There you go. So we did a large uh, survey in, in the Netherlands. Uh, it's 220 pages, so we'll be here until 9 or 10 o'clock, so please call your family. It's going to be very late. Now, I will get out the highlights of the survey. This is the reassessment survey we did. The first one was in the end of 2014, and the second one was a couple of weeks ago in 2017. So you get the latest survey results. So what we did was ask people about their vision and opinion about connected cars, self-driving cars, knowledge, attitude, and behavior, but also things as mobility as a service, or car sharing, or sharing a cab. This is me. I'm married. I got a daughter of uh, 15 at this uh, moment. Um, we, I'm based in Amsterdam and in Helmond, it's in the Netherlands, but also opening office in Sydney, Australia. Um, just started a couple of weeks ago over there. And, most importantly, I'm also a big science fiction uh, fan. So what, we are a strategic uh, consultancy bureau and we give advice about participation and communication. Because for me, it's very important uh, and I feel very strong about it, that people get involved with different kinds of projects. And because I did the survey, I also wrote a book. It's over here to see you later. Uh, and the first uh, book I gave to the King of the Netherlands, but also to the Prime Minister of Australia, New Zealand, and Obama already uh, got my book. So we're really in the communication strategic advisory. So this is the conclusion, and we can skip the 220 pages. Because in the end, it will not be about technology. It will not be about more concrete. It will not be about more asphalt. It will be the behavior of us people. That is the most disruptive that's going to be to happen and has got to change in our point of view. So that's why we did it, to look at our knowledge, attitude, and behavior towards that. Because we need to change our behavior, otherwise you get a big problem. 2014 and 2017, uh, we presented some additional uh, questions. Mobility as a service, but I go through the statistics in just a couple of minutes. So the target group for the people who are science and really want to have the figures, uh, 60 years and older, all types of uh, people in the Netherlands, uh, both in the, in the city or uh, in the villages, 2% didn't know where they lived. So that's the problem. Uh, so that's why that's the 2%. People have a high income, low income, every income and every layer of education. So it's really a broad population of people who are asked about the future of mobility, but also asked about self-driving cars. So when you look at, the, at this one, you see that in 2030, people say, well, it's going to be electrical and self-driving, uh, but also a little bit science fiction. And I don't know if you got the Jetsons, you know the, the movie, which one knows the Jetsons? It's a cartoon. Yes, one, that's great, thank you. That I don't feel very old then, thank you very much. Uh, and the Jacksons got like a helicopter you can drive and you got a helicopter and fly through uh, space and then 
lend to another platform. There is a company in the Netherlands, but also in America, it's called Terrafuca. When you've got money left, you can buy shares in them because they are developing it at this moment. In 2030, most people will say it will be, uh, there are a lot of statements in uh, there, but you, can, you don't have to read it. Um, it's going to be less pollution, so less fossil fuel, only solar energy, electrical energy, uh, uh, different kind of wind energy, so clean energy and not very much um, the fossils we have at this moment. So what we did is different kind of things from the early adopters, the innovators, until the legates, and those type of groups in the middle. It's uh, called the Rogers Theory, um, and it was conducted on this, uh, on this survey. And what you see is that the early uh, adapters are male, above 50 years and older. They buy every day, or every year, sorry, they wish they would buy every day a new car, but they, every year or every two years they buy a new car, uh, so they know about connected cars, know about new gadgets, and really uh, get into this uh, kind of subjects. And the legacy are, most of them are female, 40 years and uh, younger, uh, a slightly uh, different uh, income, a little bit less than the early adopters, but they really enjoy driving around for themselves. Because when you've got a self-driving car or connected cars, somebody else is going to, to drive, not you. So that's why they are legates and they really hate the self-driving cars. You see a difference? So one of the points is to share knowledge. In the Netherlands, there's a lot of media. There's a lot of attention about connected cars, self-driving cars, a lot of talk about, a lot of discussion. And you see 2040 and 2070 that it will shift. So when people know more about it, they or go to the early adapters and say, well, that's great, I want it, or go to the legates and say, if this is it, I don't want it anymore. So the first thing is when you have to do and when you really have to your business development is share the knowledge and create more knowledge than you already uh, are doing at a certain point. And the connected cars as a theme is very unpopular in the Netherlands because people don't know what they are talking about. But when you ex uh, explain it to them, like you got uh, different kind of parking apps, and those parking apps you can use, and you can go to the parking and also uh, pay it and see if there's a free spot. So you don't have to get into the traffic jam of uh, different kind of parking uh, areas. So that's the one thing. Another thing is green light. Um, connected cars in your uh, car, when you go to a traffic sign, you have to drive a certain a uh, number of kilometers and you can have uh, green and go to green in the green lane. So that's another example of connected cars. When you explain it like that, that people really want and know uh, what they get, they really like it. But the term in general of connected cars, people don't know. So when you know it, knowledge, attitude and behavior, it's different kinds of things. Difference between men and female, a difference in the knowledge and how much they know about it, then you can change the attitude and towards the behavior, but you have to explain it and get really with the participation uh, projects, really in, under the skin of people, because then they know what you, they are going to get or not, and they can make a decision. So three keywords when you go to the marketing, the comfortable one, the safety one, and uh, less traffic jams. Those are the three keywords that people really like and say, okay, if this is going to be for me, then I will get in and will buy the new products or the new services you already have. Self-driving cars is really popular in Holland because we've got a number of programs. We, uh, one of them is Wipot, um, it's Wageningen, uh, and the other one is an Appelscha. There are self-driving cars actually on the public uh, roads. But Jeanette van Aren will tell about the new projects in the province of North Holland. So they really are going to get out. So you have to stay put. 
and uh, have the self-driving cars really on the public road for long term, I think about three years. But she will tell and explain more about it. There's one problem with the self-driving cars, and it is about control. People want to have control, but they only want to have control in the city. So when you are in a traffic jam, when you're on the highway, people say, oh, the car can drive by itself. No worries, no problems, uh, no issues. The car can take over. But in the city, uh, they don't trust the self-driving car because, for example, when I drive through the city and I see a ball on the street, I think, oh, ball and a child, so I have to stop. But the self-driving car is programmed that a ball will be an object, so you can run it over. So people don't trust that the uh, self-driving car will have the uh, associative thinking that we have. So that, that's the problem with the self-driving cars, and people want to have control. And you see the large percentages, 55, 55 and 59% of that. So one of my fantasies I put out and asked other people is that when 50% said yes to the next uh, subject, you can, can have uh, self-driving cars within two minutes. Do you want it, yes or no? Almost, well, slightly 47% said yes, please do. And then I will get in uh, and it's no problem for me. So knowledge, attitude, and other things is about self-driving cars, being in control or not being in control. Uh, but they also, it's also about experience. So people don't uh, experience at this moment a self-driving car. I think it will go up when you get people into a self-driving car and they can, uh, can have that experience because, or not, uh, uh, they will choose if they want it or not want it. So, when you look at the government, there are other uh, issues about it. Rules, regulations, changing, supporting, that's great. But not uh, be uh, the front leader, not be the person uh, uh, who's controlling it. That's, that's what people don't want. So, who's acquainted with mobility as a service? Who knows the term? from the others, one, two, three, four, five. So mobility as a service, you get different kind of packages. You pay with your credit card or debit card, you pay one amount each month. Um, it's already in, in, introduced in, uh, in Finland. You get one amount and you get different kind of layers of mobility, public transport, car sharing, hiring a car, different or sharing a cab, different kind of mobility services. 78% of the Dutch says, I don't know what mobility as a service means. So that has to be explained as a term and what people really want. But when you explain it and you say, well, you get 95 euros and then you get a train, you get a bus, you get a taxi, you can have whatever you want in it for a certain uh, number of uh, kilometers, then people will find it attractive. So that will be the first sort. It's about 20% that people find it attractive and especially the train, car rental, the bus and the car sharing. Those issues people really want. I will skip this one. We also ask people about, well, you got different kind of, of car sharing, and this is about sharing your own car. So not like uh, we got green wheels or a, a snap car, not those kind of things, your own car. Would you really want to share it with your neighbor or other persons? And most of the people said no. Half of them said no, I don't want it, even though I added free insurance, I added, uh, you get money for it, and you can uh, decide which person is going to be into the car. And even with those terms, extra additional, still half of it don't want to share their own car. There's another thing with together, because that is an, a, a great uh, thing to do. That's on the, uh, the business level, car sharing in another way. That's, that is going really great, but their own car, to give it away to people you don't know, it's a little bit difficult. The taxi, everybody wants to 
have the tax share shared, it's about cost. So it will be more costly. Different kind of door-to-door -door services. So, so you, when you go by train, and BMW has different kind of uh, things uh, uh, and different kind of cars. You, you drive your car to the train station from BMW, you leave it there, you get a train to Madrid, and there you can get another BMW and get to your point of destination. People find that kind of service really attractive. So I got a couple of conclusions. Um, the differences between connected cars, self-driving cars, and mobility as a service. Um, you have to explain it, people have to know it, and you have to uh, look at the feeling people have about those kind of mobility and mobility services. So what is the attitude and how can you influence them with different kind of terms and conditions to get them for, uh, for new uh, business models and new business services? This is another uh, conclusion. So it's also about safety. Um, the knowledge will, will uh, share, uh, will go up a little bit. Um, and the young people really would like the mobility as a service between 16 and 24, especially the young ones uh, who don't have a car of their own. They're great. And they think it will be a good idea. So to influence the public opinion uh, and get a new business uh, idea um, is about connected cars, traffic jams on the other side, and you see little interest in different kinds of, uh, of, of themes. That's, that's the downside uh, of it and the cost of introduction. People say, well, we don't know about that. This is the final sheet for me. Um, Self-driving cars have a relatively high fame because there's a lot to talk about, even with uh, Google Cars. Uh, the awareness is, is, is going up very quickly because of the different kind of uh, media. Uh, but there's still an issue about danger, about liability, and about control. That's, that's the few uh, things that people say, well, I don't know about it, but you can solve it by just making them experience the ride in a self-driving car or a connected car as you can do outside. So that is it for me. You can ask questions because Jeanette will go uh, secondly and then Joost, and then you can ask us all three questions what you want. Jeanette van Aren, sector manager. Ik doe het wel. Okay, thank you very much. You can hear me? Yeah, now you can hear me. Uh, my name is uh, Jeanette van Adem. I'm Director of Smart Mobility and I'm working at the Profs of North Holland. And uh, I would like to um, emphasize the fact that uh, everyone's talking about autonomous cars and self-driving cars and everyone thinks that tomorrow or in three years time there will be autonomous cars. From the industry, uh, I understand that it will take about 50 years to get autonomous cars driving everywhere because it's very difficult to get autonomous cars to learn what we as people can do already. They have, they, uh, the autonomous cars need regulations, they need to know where they can drive, where they cannot drive and uh, a very difficult thing with self-driving cars is that they uh, cannot really uh, anticipate on situations which are uh, occurring in the road. We as human can. The, the example, uh, as told before, there's a ball rolling uh, on the road, and every human being knows that there's a child going to follow. The car doesn't know that, and he has to learn, and uh, he has to learn his algorithms so he, he knows how to anticipate. I would like to start with a small movie um, we have been doing trials in uh, our uh, province for a few years now and I would like to show you some uh, people we've been working with and what they think about the cooperation with us. That's the sound. 
Is there a the province with the capital yeah. of the Netherlands, yeah. Amsterdam, Europe's largest airport, Schiphol, and the highest volume of traffic in the Netherlands. So in order to develop uh, autonomous vehicles, you have to try and you have to um, experiment in the real world. This is one of the big, big problems about uh, creating and developing autonomous vehicle technology. Uh, without testing on real roads in real environments, it's very difficult to create uh, safe and, and reliable systems. Um, together with the province, we are able to do this. The province of North Holland is uh, an innovative organization and they are very much cherishing and embracing new technology uh, to help make traffic smoother and safer and provide uh, transport services. Noord Holland has almost 3 million inhabitants. In the province there's a road network of more than 13,000 kilometers of roads, which every day more than 1 million private cars and nearly 300,000 company vehicles make use of. We regulate this traffic with 270 traffic lights and 30 dynamic route information panels. We monitor the traffic situation from our own modern traffic control center with 180 cameras. We are the only province in the Netherlands that has its own traffic control center from which we control the traffic and collect real-time data. We share the data with market participants and we use this to make our infrastructure smarter. The goal of the pilot future bus was to figure out how the technology is working. The province helped us with a contact to the traffic light uh, producer and they helped us with uh, full communication with the traffic light and so we could do the traffic light communication via Wi-Fi P. Together we worked on developing uh, machine learning algorithms in order to predict the red light and green light duration of the traffic lights. Um, so we applied machine learning techniques and together we developed this, uh, these algorithms and then we could give these algorithms to the autonomous vehicle system so that the, the vehicle system could now ask the, the traffic light for a green light extension or um, could reroute itself in order, dependent on uh, when the traffic light would change. And this is a very unique capability uh, that I think is, is one of the first ones in the world that we have demonstrated this capability together. In 2017, we installed 48 intelligent traffic lights. With these intelligent traffic lights, we can collect and use even more real-time data. The intelligent traffic lights offer different communication capabilities. So interesting to have it in real-life situation running in full throttle and to see what are the problems, what are the chances of this new technology. Um, this is one of the best places in the world to do this, uh, this type of work. The infrastructure around Schiphol is arranged in order to run tests including traffic signal priority for designated vehicles and green light optimal speed advisory. And there's a map available of each intersection. We invite market participants to examine with us what smart mobility means for our infrastructure and how we can ensure a smooth flow and increase traffic safety. At first sight it may seem unexpected to work with a province and a car manufacturer together. But uh, experience in the past has shown that this is a very good combination. To other uh, OEMs, I would say, um, you know, the province of North Holland is one of the, the few that are willing to collaborate, have the data um, and have the capability of trying something that goes from an idea to actually doing something in practice, and, and that is a unique capability. You are welcome to do pilots in Nord Holland. So what you hear here, uh, right here is that change is upon us. The automotive industry is changing rapidly. Uh, there's lots and lots um, possible in, um, in all the, uh, the innovation. And um, what we have learned is that about 92% of all the traffic accidents are caused by humans. So if you would take out the human factor out of this equation, traffic will become a lot safer. That will be if there would be a completely reliable system. Right now, such a system is not available. So, for instance, if you drive a Tesla on auto autopilot in an urban situation and you encounter a, tra a red traffic light, it will not be able to see that there's a traffic light. It will not be able to recognize that the light is red, so it will just drive on. So right now, as a road authority, 
I'm concerned about the traffic safety and the traffic flow, and I'm really thinking about should I put in place regulations for uh, cars which are using all these new technologies. Another thing I want to know is how can I enhance my safety? How can I, en en can I enhance my traffic flow? And for this reason, I want to do uh, pilots with um, lots of uh, OEMs and lots of uh, other service providers. And what we also did the last few years was um, find out how we can communicate between traffic lights and cars. That's something we did with, uh, with Nissan uh, starting from 2013, and we're able to do it right now. So in order to find questions for all these, um, to find answers for all these questions, we uh, started with our smart mobility trials area Schiphol. It's the uh, Amsterdam airport. Uh, area and there we have four provincial roads with lots of traffic, two lanes, sometimes four lanes, real traffic, real traffic lights. These traffic lights are all able to communicate through either Wi-Fi P, DSRC or 3G and even 4G with the cars. We also have uh, depicted in orange uh, a yellow, uh, in, in orange the BRT route, the bus rapid uh, transit route. It's one of the longest bus, the dedicated bus lanes from Europe. In this area, we right now are conducting uh, 11 pilots. Um, two of them were shown in the, in the movie already. And another one is, for example, um, one of the use cases uh, from Europe, Glossa, green light speed advisory and we did that with uh, 4G and that's uh, that's unique it's never been done before anywhere else so in the movie you saw the project leader from uh, Daimler-Benz from the future bus they wanted to test an autonomous bus level 3 uh, there was still a driver uh, available just out of precautionary uh, reasons and this bus was able to drive through three tunnels um, along 19 traffic lights with which it was able to communicate and get to full stop near 11 bus stops. As a road authority, I was wondering whether it was possible to drive autonomously in a tunnel because you don't have differential GPS, you cannot understand where you are, but because all the data they used, they used differential GPS, they used uh, long, sh long, uh, long radar, short radar, uh, LIDAR, um, and they also built a uh, high definition map during the few months they were uh, testing. And so in the end, they were able to drive autonomously completely and they could uh, communicate with all traffic lights. Another thing we're going to start with right now um, is another project with Nissan. It's called SAM, Seamless Autonomous Mobility. And what you see here is a, a fleet manager. This is the fleet manager from Nissan, um, and he will be uh, sitting in our traffic control center, and he will be able to communicate with them and get the data from all the traffic lights and all the, um, um, well, every, every traffic data we have over there, and, and that's a lot. And he is in charge of a few autonomous cars because the idea is that an autonomous car needs to have regulations and needs to know what it is able to do and what not. So if there is an autonomous car coming, it has an HD map, it has sensors, it has cameras, it, it has a lot of information of its surroundings, but sometimes it comes to an unex unexpected situation like a roadworks. And what it does then is it contacts the fleet manager and with all the radars and cameras and lidars, it builds a picture, it sends a picture to the fleet manager and then the fleet manager is able to paint a path around the obstacle. And this information will be sent to the other car who's coming after him. And this information will also be shared with all other cars in the, in the vicinity. So in this uh, in this way, we will be able to have level four, even almost five autonomous cars in, uh, in the city. Um, and we're trying uh, to do the pilot. We're starting our pilot uh, right now. We're working on a project plan right now. And from um, 2018 and 2019, this service will be running from Schiphol to 
uh, to the Keukenhof. So I think that's my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Jeanette. So the, <laughs> the final one is uh, Joost Belsma from Together. Bon dia, Barcelona. My Spanish is really terrible, so I do it in English. Um, my name is Joost Belsma from Together, a startup. We started uh, last year, October, already live in the whole Benelux, and maybe Spain after this event. What is Together? We have a B2B oriented platform. Um, we work with communities. What does it mean? You can say, okay, uh, as an employer, you buy Together, and we say only our employers can work drive together, but it's also possible to do it with the whole business parks. In, in Amsterdam, at the Zuidas, we're working with 180 different companies and they're driving all together. Uh, and what's special about us, there's no other company who offers the same platform as we have. A bit of history. 2013, two, stu two students uh, found together uh, yeah, 1.0. In 2015, an IT club from Delft named Calendar 42 took it over. And directly, uh, we had a corporation with Accenture. Um, and after a year of doing research, interviews, uh, yeah, together 2.0 uh, came out. And I'm going to explain more about together. Uh, first, the challenge in Barcelona. Uh, when I got here with my colleague Eric, we directly came into a traffic jam. So everyone sees there's a lot of traffic jams in Barcelona, and it's in every city of Europe. Um, as you see the facts, in 2016 there were an increasing by 26.4% of traffic jams. On average, people are losing 80 minutes a week caused by traffic jams. Uh, there are a lot of cars in the city of 1.6 million people. There are around 500,000 cars. Uh, and on average, there's a 2.5 yearly increase of cars. Um, in the next video, you're going to see it. Yeah, John explains how easy it is to find a ride with the app. This is John. Is a John one? drives to work every day. Like his colleagues, Lisa, Tom, and Paul, John drives alone. And that's too bad, because John knows that carpooling is better. It's better for parking better for traffic congestion, and better for the environment thanks to lower emissions. But John drives alone anyway because he's not sure which of his colleagues live nearby. Plus, John thinks carpooling is more hassle than it's worth. That's why, especially for people like John, we created Together. Together makes carpooling with colleagues super easy. John creates a profile and indicates whether he has a car or not. It doesn't matter either way. John then enters his travel times for the coming period and together does the rest. Automatic matches are created based on the route, the location and the travel times entered. If one of the matches accepts, you can share a ride. Fun! But, drum roll please, it gets even better. All of the travel costs saved are split equally. Thanks to Together, John now thinks carpooling is as fun as it is easy. Share a ride together. Download the app now. As you can see with the app, it's really easy for John to get a match and drive together to their work. Now I'm going to show you some screens of the app. Um, yeah, the part of opening the app to get a match. When you open the app, you can select a, a day of the week when you want to drive together with someone to work and back to home. So this is the first screen you will see. After that, you select the day. Okay, I want to get there on uh, tomorrow at work at 9.30. The app gives you directly the four best potential matches. Um, and as you can see, Tommy is a scary guy. I don't want to drive with him. You can put him away. He doesn't get a message because that's not social. Um, and you send the request to the other three people. When it gets accept, over here, you see a directly connection to Google Maps to get the navigation, and also a directly connection to the SMS function, because we think the social contact uh, before, a for before a match is yeah, quite important. And after it, you see the RIT, the, the, yeah, the RIT information. Um, you see how many points you earn, how late you have to leave from home, um, how late you pick up Louise, 
and you arrive at work at 9.30. So the app does everything. The only thing you have to do is send requests to the people you want to drive with. What's next for Together? Um, we're building at the moment uh, Together events. We're starting with a festival named North Sea Jazz in the Netherlands. Um, they have 75 persons spread on three days. And there are 10,000 cars a day coming to the event. And our target is to get 1,000, so 10% less cars on the road. So it's quite an, uh, yeah, a challenge for us. But we think we're going to make it. Um, here are some of our partners in the Benelux. Um, and in the next movie you see yeah, how fast we are growing with the communities uh, in five months. You see that all the colors have different places. Um, that means that every company like Accenture has eight working places and like 20 um, customer uh, yeah, buildings. And you can all put it in the app and select, it and select those to drive to and uh, yeah, go back to home. And at the moment, this is where we're standing. Uh, life in Belgium, Luxembourg is not on the, in the map and especially in the Netherlands. And I'm going to end it again with the Spain term. I practiced, I hope. Unyet uh, al movimiento. I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Joost. Um, so we got one or two minutes left. So, Jeanette, can I ask you to take a seat? And Joost also. Maybe some people of the audience got a question. And there's a mic over here. Does anybody have a question for Together or for me or for the province of North Holland? Was everything clear? So, Jeanette, then I got one question for you. What do you really want? You want OEMs? You want Toyota? You want, what do you want? Yes. Yes. What I really would like is uh, do pilots with uh, other OEMs as well. And because what I'm really interested in is how can I get uh, the traffic safer and what is possible right now with the cars and whatnot. Okay, so really, you really want to have the <laughs> you really want to have the OEMs, zeg maar, yeah. for as a counterpart uh, yeah. to do that. And Joost, what do you want? But except the mic. <laughs> I want to make a difference with Together. We want to avoid traffic jams, avoid the parking problems in all the cities, and get people back yeah, in the car together. Because when you enter a traffic jam and you look to the left or to the right, you see everyone driving alone. Yeah, and it's better when you do it together, we say. Okay. Thank you very much. So the conclusion is because the time is up that if you are an OEM, please contact uh, Jeanette. And uh, together you can download, all of you can download or ask your uh, company to uh, do business with uh, together. And we also got some uh, brochures and uh, leaflets uh, for you. So very much for your attention. We're not leaving. So if you want to ask questions in person, that's also possible. Thank you very much.